Okay, this is a, a pretty classic example from electrostatics. Uh, you will see this problem again in your higher level e and courses, I can promise you. Uh, it'll be twisted up a little bit, there won't be as much symmetry, but this is a pretty good example and a pretty good introduction to how we have to deal with the calculus <coughs> in uh, some of these e and problems. So the situation is this. You're given a bar, uh, and we're going to assume that it's a reasonably thin bar, with a charge Q uniformly distributed over that bar and you're being asked to find the electric field at a point in space here. Uh, so, number one, the one thing you should notice is that symmetry is going to be on our side here. The way they've set up the bar and the way they set up their coordinate system makes this nice and easy. Uh, if you're given a problem where you're not given this level of symmetry, remember you can change your coordinate system so it might be possible to regain some symmetry that way. But we'll solve it here uh, based on how they've done it. So the idea is, if, if I'm going to try to find uh, the electric field here due to this entire bar, that's, on the face of it, that's just a really difficult problem. However, if I break this bar up into some differential elements, so I'll draw one rather poorly here. So this is going to be my differential element of the bar. I can find pretty easily the electric field at this point due to that differential element and just from how I know vectors work I can sh I can tell you immediately that it's going to look something like this right no problem well how do I find what that is we go to our good old definition of the electric field and I'm going to write this in differential form DE is going to equal to K which is our constant times our charge, in this case, I'm going to put a differential charge, dq, over r squared. Now, before we go on, let's sort of unpack what, what we just did there. The differential element of the electric field, this guy, this is the contribution to the total electric field of this differential element here. So I'm calling that dE. This is my dE. <clears throat> and it's going to be equal to k, which is our 1 over 4 pi epsilon, not constant times the differential charge, which is the amount of charge that's on my differential element right here. This is my dq over r squared. Now, what's r squared in this case? Remember, r is just the, the uh, distance from the source to the point of observation. So this is actually my r there. So let me get rid of the clutter that I just put on the page. I'll rewrite the r here. So, if we're in a standard Cartesian coordinate system, which I've defined up here, this is going to be x, and this is going to be y, where x is my distance from my origin to my point of observation, and y is my distance from my origin to my source point. And, um, of course, as you can see, this defines an angle, which I'll call theta. And we're going to unpack this a little bit more. Well, just from Cartesian transformations, you know that r squared is going to be equal to x squared plus y squared, right? That's going to become important, and we typically need to write it that way if we're doing a Cartesian system, because we're going to have to integrate against either x or over either x or y, sometimes both. So I need to get this in a form that is going to have the proper variables. So that's the easy one. The more difficult one, perhaps, is dq. What is dq? Notice I'm given a total charge, and I'm given a length of the bar. So it becomes really easy to talk about dq as a linear charge density, which I'm going to call lambda, times a length. Right? That's, just, that's how we get a quantity back out of any sort of density. We typically see densities in, in three dimensions, uh, and we all know that if, if the density of something is rho, then rho times whatever volume we're looking at gets us out the quantity that we're typically looking for. So in this case, it's the same thing. This is a linear charge density, which is going to be defined as total Q charge over total length. What is my total length? If you look at the symmetry here, it is going to be 2A. So what I've come up with is that dQ is just equal to Q over 2A times uh, my length, this term right here. Now what is my length? Notice I'm in, I've gone into differential world here. 
So I'm going to need a differential length element. So this I'm going to call my differential length dy, and I'm running out of room here. That's the idea. That's how I've turned this dq here that I don't really know how to handle into something that I can handle pretty easily. Because if I'm going to have to integrate, integrating over dq, if I'm not given the appropriate limits, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's easy to find my limits for dy. So what I've taken is dq and turned it into a, f a form over which I can integrate. Okay, so what we've come up with here now, let me write this down here, dE is going to be equal to k, that's my constant, times, you see, q over 2a dy, and that's going to be 1 times 1 over x squared plus y squared. I've written it a little awkwardly just so you can see the, uh, the components. Here's r squared. Here is my linear charge density. Here is the length over which I'm evaluating. And of course, k is just a constant. And what we've done is we've gotten this, the magnitude of this vector right there. Did everybody see that? Okay. I'm going to pause and erase a bunch of stuff. I'll be right back. All right. Through the magic of modern technology, our screen is all of a sudden nice and clean. I've rewritten my expression for dE in a form that's a little uh, more used to what we're seeing. All I did was I took what I previously wrote and repackaged it in a cleaner form. So now, let's talk about uh, other considerations. Notice, if I look at some symmetry here, and let me draw in a corresponding differential element down here. And remember, at the end, I'm going to be integrating over the entire length of this rod. So what I come up with is I've got this other differential element. And if, I, if I've if i hopefully drawn it uh, appropriately, I, I'm choosing it to be completely, exactly symmetrical to my other differential element. I'm going to get an electric field that looks like this from this element here. I should have done that in a different color, but I think you see where I'm going. Now, obviously, the y components of those are going to cancel. If the charge is uniform, the distance is the same. That, of course, means this angle is theta as well. If my distance is the same, my charge is uniform, the y components of these guys are going to cancel. And what I'm going to get out of this is <clears throat> a vector that looks like that. So how do I get that out of this expression I've written up here? I've written up here. Let me clean this up a little bit again. Okay. Too much. Well, notice, just from trigonometry, I'm going to have to multiply this expression times the cosine of theta just to get uh, that component. So what is the cosine of theta? Well, as I've drawn here, that's really easy. The cosine of theta equals x over r, which in this case is going to be x over x squared plus y squared. And there's no magic here. I'm just applying a definition of cosine and unpacking the Cartesian transformation of R. And there I have it. So what I get total is that my DE in the X direction, I'm doing a component here, and it might look weird to be taking a component of a quantity that wasn't initially a vector. But I think you can all I think we can all see our way through that one to forgive my my calculus sins. Uh, what I'm going to come up with is that is this my dE times the cosine of theta. And when I put all that together, I'm going to get k times q dy over 2a. And notice I should have an x up here. Let me write that a little bit better. q times x dy 2a. And notice I have a whole factor, I, you know, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This r is not squared, so this term here should be in, under the radical. Apologies there. So I've got a full r here, and I've got a square root of r here. So what that comes, well, what I get there is x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. And I'm finally in a position where I can integrate this pretty easily. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need to put in the appropriate limits on y and integrate over this. This is just, I'm just going to come up with an e term here. And over here, I'll actually come up with 
the electric field. So you guys can all handle the calculus after this. We're playing a little fast and loose with the differential elements, but that's the idea.